Okay, so in this video, we're going to learn how to update values in our database. Before we go ahead and do that, let us set up some things in our design. So we want to be able to display some more options when we click on these three dots here. So it shows us an option to edit. And we also want that when we click on this, it takes us to the view route. So let's work on this first one that takes us to the view route. So just head back to our code where we have that's anchor tag so in here we're just going to say blogs slash and the route for that is just to be sure view route okay we're just going to pass in this slug so i'm just going to do that by saying ejx syntax support equal to over here I'll say blog dot slug so if i save and head back to the code and refresh so when I click on this, that should take us to the slug and then it shows us the view itself. So we can see this all working. So the next thing is to make this to display more options. Now, if you have a look at what we've done so far, we have this portion of code here. I'm just going to put comments. So I'll call this display more button. So this is meant to display more things for us and at the bottom here, this portion of code, I have uh, some options already set up, but I use the class of Denon, so I'm just gonna remove that. Denon is simply the class of Bootstrap that hides stuff. So when I refresh, you can see the portion that was hidden. So we want, when we click on this, we toggle that class. So we either add Denon or remove Denon, okay? So we're gonna add an event listener to this portion, and then we are going to now display this one. Let me just add some comments so that's more understandable or say options, options list. So the way we're going to do that is by using some value in a JavaScript. I'll go to my public folder, I'll create a new folder, call it JS. I'll just create a new file in there and call it index.js, index.js and uh, in my ejx file i've already made linked to that file okay so this is linked to this file here so i'm going to make a reference to that button i'll say const more button equal to document dot query selector i'm going to use query selector all because we can have more than one of that in a particular page so query selector will make a reference to all of them and then it would of course differentiate them uh, with position array num uh, keys okay so when the query selector all what are we querying selector all it's uh, the class called more create a for loop so that we can loop through each iteration of the uh, more button that we've selected so a simple for loop I'll say uh, let i equal to zero and then the that's the minimum and then the maximum is it's going to be less than more button dot length and of course we're going to add some increment to that index okay so for every more button uh, which is going to be at the key of i i'm going to add an event listener the event listener is going to be a click and I'm also going to pass in uh, an arrow function. Okay, now in this arrow function, I want to make a reference to that child inside. So I'll just go to djx inside that div because this portion is inside the div we made reference to. We have two direct children. We have the first one and the second one. So all of these children are also in kind of like an array. And I'm going to make a reference to this particular one that has the denon and is at the position of one. So this is a zero position and then this is one. Okay. So I'll say more button. Of course, uh, just put the key of I dot children. So the children I'm looking for, the child I'm looking for is a child at position one and then I'll make a reference to the class list by saying dot class list and I'm going to go uh, that denon class so if the denon class is there it's going to remove it and if it's not there it's going to add it back so when we refresh 
I'll click on this. Let's see if we made a mistake in our code somewhere. Okay, so we didn't reference the class properly. We just added dots because it's a class. And so let's go back, let's refresh. So when we click that, we can see it brings out that. So when we click on this, it should take us to our edit route. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go to our index.ejx. So uh, what do we have the button? This is the href. So here we're going to say blogs slash edit. And, uh, okay. We can choose to pass in the slug or the ID. So I'm going to just, I'm just going to use the ID. And we're going to do that by just passing in that ejx say blog dot id so that's going to make a reference to a blog the id so let's go to our blogs route let's create a route for that so say route just put a comment route that handles edit view so we're going to say route out the get and we're going to say edit slash uh, so edit slash then we're going to pass in the id as the parameter and what we're going to do is uh, we're also going to pass in the function arrow function and the parameters are passing in the request and response so what we're going to do is uh, when we're passing the id we're going to get that um, value that post from the database so we'll say let blog equal to blog dot find by id this time and we're going to use the request parameter so params dot id so that's going to get the blog for us and then we're just going to render the view response dot render and the view we want to render is a view called edit we've not created it and we're also going to pass in what we found so the blog the blog so we're going to pass in that blog just correct the spelling okay now since this might take a while i'll just make it an async function and here i'm going to await this value okay so this is going to render a view called edit so i'll go to my views i'll create uh i'll create a new view let's create a new file call it edit.ejx so this file is going to be very similar to when we're creating a new uh, route so I'll go to my new ejs I'll copy everything here I'll paste that in the edit I'll just make some changes here since we're passing in the blog itself so I'll say edit blog post here I can say editing and then I can make a reference to the title by using the ejx syntax say blog dot title so I'll just make copy this because I'm gonna need it later so we'll make changes to our form input fields. So here I'll say value equal to, I'll paste in that. So this is going to help us so that when we fetch the value, person actually sees what's in the, in those respective fields. So they can decide to either add on or remove. So for my author, I'm also going to say value. I'll paste in that, but I'll change this portion to auto. And for the description, I'll do the same thing. Just paste in here, but here I will now say description. Okay, so everything looks okay. Let me save my blog's route. So let's head back to our website. Let's refresh, click this, click on the edit. Uh, can I get blogs, edits? Okay, so let's see, you made a mistake somewhere. Okay, so I just missed the slash before the edit. So I'll save that. Head back to our website. Let's refresh. So when I click on this option, then click on edit, it brings us to this. So it says editing some title. Let me just head back. Uh, they both have the same titles. Okay, but when I click on this edits, you can see that the text here is different. So let us uh, work on this save so that when we click on save, it updates the value in the database. So for us to be able to 
update data in our database we're going to use a method of write so that we can use apart from the default methods of post and get we can use methods like put to update that so we're going to install a package called method of write and we'll do that by simply I'll just create a new terminal say npm i method override okay so this is going to install that for you so when that is done i'm going to go to my server and then i'm going to bring that in so i'll say bring in method override so i'll say const method override is equal to require method override okay and i'm also going to use that so i'll just come uh, underneath where i have express.url encoded i'll say app.use uh, i want to use the method override and the way i want to use that is by calling something i'm gonna just say underscore method okay so this way when i call in underscore method equal to the method i want to override whatever method I have. So let's go to our edit.ejx. So let's go to our edit.ejx and um, for the action where we have the method post, we're just going to leave that the way it is. But for the action, we just where we're going to make the change. So in here, I'll just say slash and then I'm going to pass in the ID. Say blog.id and then after that, I'll put a slash or oh, sorry, question mark put underscore method and I'm going to put the method I want to use which is the put method so I'm going to use the put to override the post so I can make my uh, updates so in our router for us to get a reference to this we just need to have a slash and then the ID as a parameter and the method is going to be post so I'll go to my blogs route underneath here I'll say route to handle uh, updates so it's going to be router the puts this time and then it's going to be located as slash and then i put this so this is going to handle that uh, request and also i'm going to pass in a function which is an arrow function so i'll say request that response comma response sorry Okay, so I'm going to say request the blog is equal to blog.find find by ID and I'm going to pass in request.params.id so whatever ID we're using we're going to find that blog post so I'm going to say let blog equal to the request blog that we just found that's the blog ID and then I'm going to set the body of each one like we did before to uh, uh, I'm going to set the blog title so I'm going to set the blog to uh, the body request so I'll say blog dot title equal to request the body dot title gonna say blog dot auto the same thing equal to request dot body dot auto I'll say blog dot blog dot description is going to be equal to request dot body dot description Okay, so I'm going to add a try and catch. Okay, so if we are successful, we want to save that. So I'll say blog is equal to blog dot save. And if we're not successful, if we're not successful, I'll go to the error. Uh, if we're not successful, let me just console log the error so we can just see that. And then we want to redirect back to where we came from so i'll say redirect put some make a template string there 
and I'll say blog slash edit uh, slash uh, the ID. So I'll say blog the ID. And of course, I want to pass in the data so that everything doesn't look blank. Okay, of course, if we're successful, I want to redirect and put a comment redirect to the view route. So uh, let's say response dot redirect. Uh, we're going to the view route. So I just put a template string as a blog slash and put a slash here, blogs slash and then put my dollar sign as blog dot. Uh, slug because our our routes view route needs a slug let me put a slash here save and let's test that out so refresh just want to change this title let's click on save invalid response okay so go back okay so uh, because this might take a while let me just make this an async and then I'm going to await this and I'm also going to await this. Okay, let's see if that fixes the issue. Let's go back, I'll refresh this. Just change this title, click on save so we can see that works. Okay, so it's displaying the change in title. I can go back and refresh this. You can see this is some block title two, two, three, four. I can still see that here. So I can make an edit to this one. Let's edit this guy. I'll see uh, changed title. Click on save. So that changed the title. And then we'll go back to index page. You can see it's a change title. And the cool thing is that also the slug also changes. So you can see change title. That might not be what you want, but the way we set it up, that's how it works. So that's how to simply update post in your database by using the method override and using the put to do that. So the next video, we're going to add a delete function.